Beyond the Ring, a podcast that covers all things in the stock show industry from the informative to the insane, starring Ryan Rash. I just want y'all to know that I made it to TV and it was not in a serial killer documentary or porn. I call that a win. And Dale Hummel. Most bad government has grown out of too much government. Now on with the show. Welcome to Beyond the Ring. This is Dale Hummel alongside co-star Ryan Rash. Hello, hello, hello. Live from the Vegas Strip, this is your favorite commentary from the game. Half live from Vegas. I am not half live. I am here. <laughs> I am not there, but I am going to wake up at 2.30, 3 o'clock a.m. to join Ryan in Vegas. I am judging the county fair adjacent to the Vegas. I have a rental car. I am here, and let me tell you, I am fixing to show Clark County what the gay is all about. Yes, ma'am. I am excited, Ryan, that uh, Holly and I are going to be out there tomorrow, and I'm going to be in Vegas with a TV star. Oh, I am the most TV star. So let's just start out at the current event. So you people that want to talk about all this politics and don't like it, whatever, I got a lot of current events to talk about in my life. So I know y'all don't <laughs> care about my life, but I'm going to talk about it. I also might have been drinking at the bar for a little bit. So, you know, you, you, you might have. That sounds like a Hunter Biden answer. I might have. I didn't smoke no Parmesan <laughs> cheese. <laughs> That's good. I'm proud of you. So let me tell you what happened to me on Tuesday morning. I've been telling all you people about this reality TV big show and all this other stuff. And that it was not my show, but I had been filmed at a show that I was judging. Yada, yada. Well, episode four of Pig Royalty happens. And the gay is in the last 20 minutes. I'm not the focus. I'm not the star. But I was in there. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say this is terrible. This is awful. A lot of people think this is the greatest thing ever. I do not care what you think. Honestly. Because I don't care what anybody thinks. If I had, I would not be who I am. I will tell you that there was not one inaccurate thing portrayed about the show I judge or how I was depicted on that show in episode four. It was all true. It was all honest. It was all that. They got mad when the little boy got beaten in showmanship. Everybody gets mad when their kid be gets beaten in showmanship. They loved me when they won the show. Everybody loves you when you win the show. Actually, not everybody. I had, was at a show one time where the people that won got mad because the one that won, they didn't like as much as the third overall. Y'all don't want to know what I told those people at the backdrop. But Okay, now for clarity, are they not maybe sucking up to you a little bit and wanting your approval of the show? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that was a very honest and accurate depiction of me and the show I judged. And that's all I care about. <laughs> and I think that's that's good. Anything that I wasn't filmed in, why would I care about? You would have spoke up if they would have depicted you anything but accurately, I assume. But it was honest and accurate and because they make me out to look like the goddess I am is not my problem. Oh my. But oh my. I have one goal now that you were recently on, I think last night, which would have been Tuesday night. Oh yeah. Everybody saw me. So I, I think this is this is perfect. Perfect timing. We can go to Fremont Street. I can pimp you out for selfies and autographs. It's gonna be profitable. When Prof you get here to Vegas tomorrow, you ain't gonna be wrong because from me parking in ballet IH airport. Terminal C to getting to my rental car in Vegas at McCarran Airport. 22 people came up to me and were like, You were on Discovery Channel or whatever. Da, da, da. Three of them asked autographs. And like, these are not stock show people. I promise you. Well, some of them might be. No, none of these 22 were. None. They could be flying in for the county fair. Uh, I doubt that. But if they are, Hey, there's people from Utah driving in to watch me. Yeah, I heard that. See? So there could be some flying in. Maybe. I'm flying in to watch you. You're not flying in to watch me. You're flying in to go to <laughs> Vegas. Because <laughs> right. your wife I, wanted I to also go. I'm excited to have a couple days in Vegas, and, and especially getting you onto Fremont Street. So, back to the current events. Okay. what I have so many. I don't even know where to start. I want to tell everyone that like reached out and said I did a nice job or whatever on the show. That's fine, and that's lovely, and that's great, and I appreciate all of it. I also want to say for anybody that's talking bad about this show and doesn't think that it projects 
the image that Junior Livestock Show's name, I'm not going to say you're wrong, but I'm also going to say in four episodes, I have seen one thing that I thought was glaringly inaccurate. And that is when the show team, all dressed in the same outfit, walked up to the show manager before the show and presented her roses. Yeah, that doesn't What, what was that all about? They were trying to like portray the political aspect of livestock shows. And it is a real life thing, but I think they took it too far. Got it. The person that they portrayed as political, the judge, Tai Chumley, he is my friend. They focused on the showmanship aspect. Yes, he used one of that team's kids to win junior showmanship and one of those girls to win adult showmanship. She was in a t-shirt. I don't know how you justify that, but... I think adult showmanship, I, I, I'm not aware of that one. No, I'm... no, this was a severe, serious adult showmanship, but... God, I don't think I've ever seen a serious adult showmanship. Oh, I have a lot. They were truly out there competing, trying to win, period. Dale, watch the show. I can't. I'm not capable. Right. And I, I watched the trailer, and I was I was personally turned off by the trailer. That doesn't mean that everybody I won't watch should be the turned show. off by the trailer. I posted how terrible the trailer was, but and you think I would be less disappointed in the episode? Yes, I, I do think you would. And Ty Chumley was not portrayed accurately because if you got past showmanship, the hogs he used to win breeds actually went on to do stuff at major shows and all this other stuff, and neither one of those teams. Did a lot of good, but that doesn't matter. Here's my thing. And I said this in my Facebook post after I was aired on this episode. I had a distinct advantage that most people did not that were shown in this. Because I have been down this road before. And so I was very careful and very accurate on what I said and how I acted. Because I know how this works. That's nothing against the production company. They're trying to get a hit show put on television to get a second season, etc. I have nothing against them. Every reality show that's filmed, there is somebody that is not portrayed accurately or honestly or in whatever. And I get that. But you also can only blame editing so much. And if you've never been in that position then you don't understand. I did. The, the show that I was filmed at was the weekend after, the Saturday after the election between Trump and Biden on Tuesday. I gave a 15-minute speech about that election and what we were going to face. Guess what? None of that made it on the show. I'm not surprised. I gave an interview with the producers of the show afterwards. That lasted probably 10 minutes, but I gave them no ammunition for it to be juicy or dirty or interesting, so none of that got filmed, and I'm fine with that. Nor did they probably like your opinion on that. And that's fine, but that is why I was portrayed accurately. Excellent. But I have a big problem with all these people through the first four episodes, and I, and I get it. I'm not saying that everything on these first four episodes makes us look great. I think there are lots of things on this that actually depict why the show industry is the best place to raise a child. The Wren family constantly shows that little boy why he should do things. What? do Don't do this. I mean, they correct him. They give him props. They whatever. I mean, it is why this industry is the best it's ever been and why it's the best place to raise a child. I will also say that the people that say, oh, my God, whatever, you don't want to actually open your eyes and understand what goes on at every show. Because, again, other than one event in the first four episodes, I've seen nothing on that show. Whether it is an accurate depiction of what happened between that person and whoever's on there is not said done or shown at every livestock show in America. But the California governor's race. I think you, you take a personal interest in that. See, Dale thinks that after Trump didn't win, I just don't listen to the news anymore. anymore, anymore. So last night, before I go out to family dinner, because y'all know my parents' house has to be completely reconstructed, whatever, and they've moved into this lake house, and now it takes me like 
30 minutes to go to family dinner through like, I'm not even going to tell you. If you see my snap, you know, I'm watching Fox News, Brett Bear. And at the end, they announce, one of his little commentators announced that next week, Caitlyn Jenner, which I know that all of y'all may not know who Caitlyn Jenner is, and I had to give Dale a little refresher course. Give him the real name. Caitlyn Jenner was Bruce Jenner, who was the Olympian gold medal athlete who sired several of the Kardashians by Kris Jenner. They had babies. He was a man. She was a woman. They made babies. Then they had a reality show, and Bruce Jenner decided he wanted to be a woman. So he had his rearranged, and now he is a full-blown woman. And he is. She is. And now, now, next week, he, she, what, I don't care what you say. I'm going to state again. I wear makeup. I have fake nails, whatever, all this other stuff. I am a man. Don't want to be anything but a man. Okay? But, Caitlin, she's a little different. She had different things. She is going to announce her candidacy for the governor of California as a Republican against Gavin Newsom. And I I don't have any idea where Caitlin's political views are, but I I would not. She ain't a conservative. Yeah, I would have not thought that. And She's not. The other crazy thing is she may win. Oh, I think she'll win. And I guess I'd I'd probably take that over news. There's enough of the crazies that will vote for her and all the Republicans will vote for her because they just want anyone other than him. Yeah, no, I I can get that. I don't know, I know anything about her other than the obvious. I mean, she has not put out any of her political stances or any of that, but she's seen an opportunity to get elected. And she's not dumb. I mean, I think a bum could beat Gavin Newsom right now. I think I think so. Let's move on to the southern border. And then we're gonna, I'm going to keep this very brief. I was going to go on and on about it, but we, we do not have time. I got more shit to, to talk about, dude. Oh, and I have more after this one as well. But, okay, southern border, the crisis that isn't a crisis, is a crisis, whatever you want to call it. Camel mm-hmm. does not think it's a crisis, by the way. And she is in charge of it. She is, no, she had to go get German chocolate cake yesterday. She did. So unfortunately, this is not just about people from other countries crossing the southern border because they want a better life. It's about national security. We had two men from Yemen that are on the FBI terrorist watch list apprehended. If they apprehended two of them, Ryan, how many you think made it across without being apprehended? 570,000. I don't know. Man, why do you think these 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 two individuals, not talking about the others, but just those two that we know of, chose to come across the southern border and chose to do it now. Dude, did you not see the video of the little boy that they left out in the field? I did. I did. This this, this should all be a wake up call. About a absolute wake up call. Asylum or anything like else. This is about they just want to get away from where they are and across the border. And again, I I'm not defending Camel Toe, but the Biden administration and Camel Toe have said that that original statement that she was going to solve the crisis on the border is invalid. She is looking at the root of the problem on why there is a border surge. Well, that's fine. Eat less German chocolate cake and figure it. Absolutely out. with you. It's it's interesting to me that when you you think about her duty there, that is that is the absolute last person that I I would put in charge of something like this. And and if though if the American public. The liberal side, the left side of our populace, would ask the question why these two terrorists were trying to get into the United States. I don't think they really want to know the answer because it's not good. Let's just be completely honest and unbiased here because I am not a Democrat or a Republican. I think I am independent, but I am a moderate. If you're Joe Biden and you know whether you want to admit this is a crisis at the border or not, If you're going to tap somebody to figure this out, if you're going to say, hey, you know what? This is such a problem that I need to, like, tell the people of America I have chosen someone to lead this effort to figure this out. Would you not pick someone that actually is on a state on the border? California, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas? 
something, even if they're a senator or congressman in in Washington, not camel toe, who plainly says, oh, I'm not going, because there have been senators and congressmen that have gone, shared video, all this other stuff, just pick some, it could have been a Democrat. He just, he just isn't going to do that. I, I, I'm going to refer because to him. Because he's dumb. Yeah, Mr. Race Bait. He, he does, he is, he is good at he's throwing that not, out there. And, and I know this is going to lead into what you want to talk about, and that's fine. His whole thing was, I don't tweet mean things, and I'm going to unite the country. Well, let me tell you something. The biggest thing that he has done so far is decide that Georgia is not worthy, but Colorado is, and Georgia's 51% black, and Colorado's 9% black, and the rest white. So, Dale, I'm tearing you up. Go ahead. At least, at least the city of Atlanta and Denver, I think. That's good. We, we can talk about Georgia, Major League Baseball, the liberal-led companies that are jumping on this bandwagon. L- let's look at it in a simple manner. They're upset about a bill in Georgia that it boils down to the simple fact that you have to present an ID to get an absentee ballot or to vote in person. That's, that's what it comes down to. Will the left want to make it out to be race baiting and that they can't get water Jim when Crow. standing in line? That is Jim what Crow, our president 2. said. 2. Jim, Jim Crow. Crow 2.0. It's, it's all race baiting crap. And I'm telling you, I'm absolutely tired of it. And Biden never gets called out by the media on this outside of maybe a couple news stations. Oh, I think he's getting called out right now. I mean, he really, because yeah, let's, let's go beyond that. Let's go beyond, let's go to Major League Baseball. Okay, the same time that Major League Baseball decides to take the all-star game from Atlanta to Denver. And Ryan already gave you some statistics on the black population. Nine to 51. Nine to 51. Okay, with that, with that said, and they're doing so because of this voter reform bill that it all boils down to, they don't want you to have to show an ID. Biden claims, or he's going to make you feel, if you prefer or believe that a person should have to show an ID to vote, that you're a racist. I'll tell you what. I'm a racist. I absolutely believe every person in this country needs to show an ID. There were 500,000 people that went to vote in person in the state of Georgia in our presidential election that had already requested a mail-in ballot. That doesn't mean they filled it out and turned it in, but when an election is decided by 11,000 votes, 500,000 show up to vote and all they have to do is sign their name and try to compare that with a signature that they may or may not have mailed in. It's it's a joke. I'm not saying just use your ID to vote, but use your ID to prove that maybe you, you didn't mail in your ballot and you want to come vote in person. There is nothing racist about requiring an ID. Major League Baseball, if you go to Will Call, they require an ID for you to, to pick up those tickets. Pick up your ticket. Yeah, absolutely. You know what Major League Baseball did the same day they moved this, Ryan? They negotiated a deal to stream Major League Baseball live in Asia with a Chinese company. China's not committing any, any, China's not doing anything wrong, are they? They don't have any human rights issues. They just like waterboard people and like. Major League Baseball is okay with China, but they're, they're upset that Georgia wants to show an ID. I'm, I am out. I am out on Major League Baseball. I I don't watch, I'm not a huge baseball fan, but you could not make me watch a game. I am out. It's no it's no better than kneeling or taking a knee during the national anthem. Any of those things that go on, I guess if if you if you're okay with that and, and want to support it, have at it. I'm not going to. Here's my issue. So you're gonna take all this money out of Georgia, out of Atlanta, all this other stuff, and put it into a nine percent white community because you say that's racist. Did anybody in the Biden administration think about this or the MLB or anybody else? Did anybody? I, 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 just, anybody? I, I think it was all. Clearly, Jen Paskey did it because she would have circled back. I, clearly, she would circle back and, and rethink that one. OK, let's leave baseball alone. Can I can do you want to lead me into Hunter Biden? Oh, my Lord. Quickly lead me into Hunter Biden. OK, so I, I'm going to try to sum this up, but it's not going to be quick, but it's going to be fine. No, quick one. We, you can shoot several can times during the campaign and since Joe Biden got elected president when he was defending his son Hunter. And I do not think there is anything wrong with a parent defending their child. 
I want to say that. Joe has said that Hunter is the smartest person he's known. This is documented. This is evidence. Th this is on multiple news media, anything you want. Hunter gave an interview, and he said that he was so effed up, or whatever you want to say, that he would try to smoke Parmesan cheese because it looked like crack. Amazing. Okay, and I, I, I hear, I watched it. No, but there. you don't understand. This was on TV. <laughs> so it has to be accurate. No, he said it. You can watch it. No, I believe that. I've heard it from several. I, I did not see that actual interview, but I have heard it. And I, I feel for Hunter Biden because I had a brother that was that deep into drugs. And I know that when you're that far gone, you don't get it. My brother never tried to smoke Parmesan cheese. But I, I saw a lot of crack pipes in his apartments over the years. So that's something. And the fact that his father, who is now the president of the United States, said repeatedly before this interview, Hunter Biden is the smartest man he knows. And then yet he lets Hunter Biden go on national TV and say, yeah, I smoke a lot of Parmesan cheese because I thought it was crack. That says everything about the administration right now. That That's not good. I, I listened to an interview over his laptop issue, and I cannot believe that it's not getting more coverage and we aren't investigating. I can't believe the contents of that laptop have been put into that. 100% a certainty he will be cleared of all wrongdoing. I, I'm afraid so. Okay, here, here here's the interview with Hunter Biden's laptop. He was asked, and I, and I, I actually wrote this down so I wouldn't wouldn't get huh. it wrong. Is the laptop yours? I truly cannot answer that, Hunter says. Did you leave a laptop <laughs> with did, did you leave a laptop with a repairman in Wilmington? Not that I remember, no. Read the book and you will realize there were there was a four year period I was not keeping track of my possessions. So okay. so we've got we've got this situation here where where anybody in, that believes one thing that comes out of this douchebag <laughs> mouth okay, is I, ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, with with that said, I'm more concerned about the fact that if he openly admits there's a four-year period he cannot keep track of his possessions, but capable of being on the board at Burisma, isn't this a bit difficult to do both well, Ryan? Not be able to keep track of your possessions. He's got four years he can't even recall. Okay, do you My realize... My first memory's from four. Do you realize how much proof is out there that this laptop is his? He's got a signature dropping it off. All of it. His legal team has requested their laptop. The administration is not denying his father's administration is not denying the emails are real on the laptop. No, it, it isn't. You're right. This, this is, this directly implicates these emails directly implicate the Biden family in a pay to play corruption scandal. No, and no. we're never going to hear any more about it. No, you're right. And that, that concerns me. No, okay. I'm going to keep, I'm going to go on one more Biden problem here. Pocahontas. You remember Pocahontas? She's still alive. But yes, she's not only alive, she came out. Really? And here's what she says, Ryan. You're going to love it. She thinks the best thing Biden could do is forgive $50,000 of student debt for each student that has a loan of that magnitude. Warren, Warren, Pocahontas states that forgiving 50,000 student whoa, 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 whoa. debt, she thinks it's equivalent to racial justice, economic justice, and generalization justice. So what about what about this? If we forgive fifty thousand, ten, whatever it is, so we're, we're saying screw the parents. This this one bothers me. Screw the parents that stay. Yeah, I'm no. Elizabeth Warren. She's never going to win an election again. So I, but I but I'm he's got Biden is going to do this, and that that says screw the parents that saved and the students that took on a part time job in high school and then again in college to pay for school. Screw those kids that decided to take a less expensive school out of fiscal responsibility. I took out 27,000 in student loans and worked while I was in college. I'm unsure what's wrong with this. I think that that was fine. I'm okay. I, I knew it was a loan. I was happy to get the loan. I knew that I was going to pay the loan back upon graduation. There is something wrong with Biden not wanting people to take personal responsibility. Can and this I personal interrupt? responsibility, I, no, I'm, I, I am cranky about it. I am out. Okay. I, I, I agree with you. Like, I have no problem with student Why? loans. Why? Why would we do this? 
Okay, wait. I have no problem with student loans and people paying them back. I I actually think scholarship is a great thing. And one one of the things that I will say about the Texas A and M Animal Science Division is they actively try to get every student there a scholarship because everybody needs scholarship. You won't believe this, but if John Ben was still alive and Cherie is, and she will tell you, I was that person that I applied for not one single scholarship in my life because I knew I didn't need it. That was fair enough. That was a good thing to do. And so I just, I I didn't do it. I could have, I mean, I had a full ride acting scholarship to SMU. Obviously my mother wouldn't let me use it because she knew I would be gay sooner, but whatever. But I never applied for a scholarship ever, not even before I got to a and after a and all that stuff, because I knew that there were people that needed it. And I had the John Ben Caraba Memorial Scholarship even before it was a memorial. I was going to get it regardless. And it all worked out. I just never applied for one. So I get the fact that people need student loans and all this stuff. I don't think that anybody that's ever applied for a student loan didn't go through every course of trying to get scholarships to prevent them from going to a student loan so yeah again i think this is all bullshit yeah i don't i think some people applied for a student loan just because they could i'm sure i i'm out i'm i i I don't think anybody's taking it serious enough i don't think there's i think it's fostering less personal responsibility. And I cannot tell you how out I am on that. One more quick thing, actually two more. Do you remember when we talked about the Spratly Islands a couple months ago? I brought it up. It's in the South China Sea. Um, They consist of a hundred- Do we have a small remote island there that we can all move to? Yes, and I'll I'll explain this to you. There's a hundred- Oh, perfect. A hundred small islands or reefs surrounding this rich fishing grounds. There's oil and gas deposits around them. They are claimed in their entirety by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, and some by Malaysia and the Philippines. So nobody really has absolute ownership. I don't know who owns them. I I really don't. But I can tell you what's happening right now. The Chinese have built up 220 ships in the Spratly Islands area right now. When asked about it, they're claiming they're fishing boats. They're not fishing boats. They're they're, they're military boats, period. No no question about it. So it appears as though China's taken that, that whole rule of possession very serious. That nine tenths of the law or the the possession is it just just take it is basically what they're getting at, I should say. So it's amazing that buildup is gonna gonna affect a lot of things. And they're claiming this this instigation of that many naval ships from China in this area is gonna instigate some type of conflict. We have a carrier in the area getting closer to that area for that exact reason. I guess why why I bring it up is is China is pushing the limits every single place they can. And this is going to be, you're going to hear more about this. I promise you. Remember Spratly Islands, it, it's going to be there. Heck, Ryan, I, I've been searching for a private island for years that I can afford. I guess you just need to find one, jump on it, and sure, just like that. Done. Ryan, now that we've we've broken all records on our current events, let's jump into the main topic. Let's talk about another one of the gays topics. The worst trends ever in livestock shows. And let me tell you, people. I was going to phrase it, questionable trend. Where's questionable? I don't give a shit. <laughs> let me tell you something, people. I'm just going to say, if you have to think, was this about me? Question yourself. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Got it. Well, I, I'm going to I'm going to own claim to a couple of these I, that I have in mind anyway. I'm not. I'm not proud of them, but I, I'm going to. I'm going to take claim to some. Okay. So where do you want to start? Because there's lots of Yeah, I mean I think we can we can jump from species to species. We can go a lot. No, no, no. I don't want to go species to species. Well just just I want to start with when we made them taller and leaner they (laughs) suck. That's that may be one of the biggest ones. And and we're not just talking about one species, we're talking about all of the species. This is why the frame sheep people hate us. The frame sheep. The frame sheep stayed in the taller in narrower the taller you make stage. them, the straighter front of them make them, the <laughs> okay. smaller gun so, to make them, the narrow and, to make and, them. And, so the frame shit people hate us. Now, I can tell you, when, when I would walk into Louisville a few years ago, when they really got them is so big, so, I don't know about so fast. I've been working on it for a long time. But it, it's impressive just how, how big they are. 
But the same thing in the cattle world, when we, we hit the what late eighties, early nineties, uh, the hogs have cycled through this, the, the frame sheep are, are kind of still in it. They talk about coming out of it, but I mean, we pull off that fleece and, and there's not much there. And I can assure you, we're not talking about the fleece, sir. We're just talking about the worst trends ever physically and the frame sheep are still in it and they hate us anyway so we'll just allow them to hate us no, more they they do not hate us at all yes they now, do i get we, the most hate mail from them when we single trait select think about making making animals taller the quickest thing we can do if we straighten out those joints we get a couple more inches and that happened to the cattle think about how big even angus cattle were um, I don't want to pick on any bulls. Uh, Dan Patch would have been a popular Angus bull that was a, as big as any I can ever remember. I said all animals. All. Well, let's let's go into the early 90s. Do you know how tall and dried out and rib counting, whatever you want to call the pigs that we made? And you know what? I can't. Again, that was the worst trend ever for the pigs. And let me tell you also, by the way, when they made them really tall and really lean, they also decided to surgically shave them. Terrible idea. Terrible they, they idea. They did. It was all happening at the same time. Now, they came off a trend in the 80s that I'm going to tie to Mr. Dan Hogue that he really pushed for wider, deeper, soggier. I'm going to call them little fat hogs. Because they went and, the other way. No, that I think part of the reason we went so far small, fat, little, that all of a sudden we got to make them bigger, longer neck, longer, taller fronted, all of these things. And we took them, we made them so lean. And Ryan, you're not going to like this. Because I'm going to talk about the commercial side just a touch. They were so lean, they couldn't even go through normal bacon fabrication. Let me tell you something I know about the commercial hog industry. Go ahead. They hated the fact that we surgically shaved these bitches for the show ring. Do you know why? Yes, because of the packing plants. But why? Though? How, why would they? Why would they dislike that? Would you let me finish? <laughs> go ahead, Miss Mister Commercial. Go ahead. Yeah, you think I know nothing about commercial bullshit? <laughs> you are, that is accurate, yes. Because when they had to go through the carcass process of all that, there needed to be some hair on those to actually take the skin, hide whatever, all this other shit off. And when we surgically <laughs> shaved them, there was nothing there. That's close. It works. When you, the, the scalding machine can't take off the hair when it's too short. Okay, now that we've cleared up the, the scalding controversies that that, that Ryan actually that understands. That actually know what scalding pigs is? We went from little fat hogs to big lean hogs, and, and we kind of go back and forth. But today, Ryan, I, I'm going to throw in another one that, that I think you'll agree with, that we've, we've blown them apart from their skeleton and put so much mass into them, we've, we've neglected to emphasize. Why are we picking on the pigs? Well, no, we're going to move from that. I think that we've probably lost. This was lost. about worst trends. Yes, ever. and this is a this is a trend, don't you? I think we've gone to pigs that that are so opened up they're not as sound. We we've, we've lost track of skeletal integrity for the last. I'm couple gonna be years. real honest. I just don't know if there has ever been a period where the hugs were real sound. Now, when they were little and fat, in the in what I call the Dan Hogue era, they were pretty dang sound. So you're I, I remember those credit soundness and hugs to Dan Hogue. No, I, I think it was because we weren't single trait selecting and we, I, I, I don't know how. You and fat, that would be yep. two traits selecting. I think it just kind of happened that direction. I'm not sure what or when. Now, I, and I have to clarify, the pigs in those, when you talk about the big, tall, narrow, bad days, they were just as crippled there then as they are now. No, maybe even more so. Yeah, worse. maybe even more so. So we did make some progress in there somewhere, I think. What about what about the shaggy pigs? You're picking on the surgical ones. What about the super shag? I have no problem with that. See, I, I would prefer somewhere in between. Closer to shag than surgical. Of course, you, Mr. Goat. Oh, the commercial industry, so whatever. I, mean, <laughs> I remember I'm a hypocrite like when it comes to that. Circus freaks. Yeah, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> I admit but it. Like, I'm open about it. All right. So the shaggy thing in the goat, in, in the pig deal, mm -hmm. I have no problem with it as long as, you know what? If you clip the front ends tight and you leave yes. the body a little hairier and the legs a little hairier, or whatever, and you look, like want to clip them like a show animal should be clipped, kind of kind of block them out a little bit. I have no problem with it. No, I'm with you. Yeah, if you're gonna like guard the bodies and then leave like four inches of bone hair on a pig, yeah, you're gonna look stupid. But <laughs> the biggest stupidest trend going right now of all species 
is we all want to put as much shag I knew on where you're going. sheep where as you're possible, going. <laughs> and we wrap it up, and we do all this, and we put conditioner, and God we breed knows, for it. They breed whatever. for it. They manage it for it. All what of we, those. I things. mean, like literally, we almost go to the extents of illegalness to get shag on the sheep leg, and then we we take what, and then fifty percent of them don't even comb the shit out. I call it the grunge look. We go into the ring with. Grunge look my ass. Homeless, whatever you want to talk about, you look stupid. <laughs> if we could just clean it up a little bit and make it look cared for, is that is that a term we can we can use? Do you send your child into the ring without combed hair? You should I'm not with you, send but... your sheep into the ring without combed leg hair. If you're gonna spend that much time growing. And I and I can appreciate how much effort's gone into breeding for it, managing it, all those things, I have but no why would you problem with any of that? Why wouldn't I have we go a the problem... extra problem? With the fact that almost 50% of the people, after they grow it, breed it, whatever, do nothing with it. And it just looks like some wild-ass afro on a sheep leg out in the middle of the ring somewhere. No, I agree. And and then when we get that level of shag, whether it's groomed or not, it's difficult when they're propped up to know what those angles are back there. And sometimes our, our judges are not watching them on the move. When we move into the, while we're on the lamb topic. We have pushed extreme, at least the most I've ever seen um, in terms of crazy levels of muscle in the show ring. And I'm going to be very open and as honest as I can be and very sincere about it. There's no question that that we have bred for more muscle, but the extreme levels that, that we are finding in, in the lamb ring, and we see it in some of the, the goats as well, but more so probably for more gears in the lamb ring that this is fed on and manipulated on more so than bred on and, and worked into them. And, and that's a problem. And I think it's obvious Then maybe we shouldn't talk about it, but it's just that big old elephant in the room that, that everybody's aware of. With that said, I think we're so far on the muscle side, whether it be lambs and even, even some of the most extreme goats, but goats are just now getting to that point that I find no advantage. And we've talked about this. Once we get to a certain level, I wish we could put more emphasis on skeletal integrity, balance, look, whatever else you want to want to put emphasis on and not just have to have the wildest muscled one out there. If Yeah, well, you would need to talk to those people that like hire those people to judge the big shows about that. No, I, I, I agree. It's and, I, and I'm not trying to tell somebody how to go out and judge a show. I'm giving my personal opinion. Those people are hiring people that should not judge shows. That's that's possible. I want to. I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not trying to tell somebody how to judge a show. I'm giving my. I'm also not telling majors who they should or should not hire. But I am also telling you that they have hired people recently that should not judge major shows. Period. And that's a bad trend. That is the worst trend. And if they don't know the reasons why they shouldn't judge them, they should do a little more investigation. I don't even aware of of who is always doing doing the hiring at the shows. You, you're you right. You don't know who is doing the hiring, and that is something that should come out. Yeah. Because whoever says they're doing the hiring then puts it off on a committee or whatever else. Guess what? For transparency for that show, and all of them should be transparent, they should say, this is the committee that hires this judge or picks this judge. Or, or I do this. Or, or this, this is whatever. the superintendent that does it or whoever. Exactly. It, it should be transparent. So the families and the exhibitors and the people that actually are involved in showing the animals should be able to contact that person or that board or that committee and say, this is who we think it should be. Or more importantly, this is who we think it should not be. And everybody's entitled to that opinion. And if they have someone to voice that opinion to. So be it. That doesn't mean that superintendent's going to listen. I want to clarify some people trends. Uh-huh. And I'm going to need your help on one of these. Yeah. Because I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I can, I can accept the mullets in the 80s. I might have even had a mullet. A little oh, bit of a mullet. God, no. But, but it has, it, in the past few years, has it circled back? Mullets, are they back? Oh, mullets are definitely back. They've been back for two years. More so on the pig side, probably? Yeah, definitely. And and then I would all small animals, all small all animals. animals, not in the cattle ring. I mean some, but no, no primarily the, all small animals. I'm gonna throw myself under the bus on this one. Pointed toe boots. I had a pair of Tony Llama wing tip 
boots until I was sometime in junior high. And they were pointy. Point E. The one pair of brown boots that I still judge in, I, I mean, I have probably 15 pairs of boots, but the go-to pair of brown boots that I judge in, they're pointy toe. I prefer square toe, but I do like this one pair of pointed, they're pointed square toe, I guess is what I should say. Brown boots. And they're How can they be pointed and square toed? Well, I will put a picture up on our Facebook about it because I'm probably going to wear them. Judging at one of the two days at the adjacent Las Vegas County Fair, so I can show you that they are square but pointy, and my mother hates them. <laughs> I don't care, but anyway, but yeah, I'm not a fan of the pointy toe boots or still toe boots or anything like that. But the pair of brown boots that I normally gravitate to, yeah, they are square but pointy. If you have boots on, I think you're going in the right, like real boots, then you're going in the right direction because 80% don't. Fair enough. I think while I had those boots on, and this this may be popular. Dale, you don't judge in boots. I occasionally do a cattle show. No. I would. No. No, you don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I even went out and bought a pair here recently that was a little more comfortable. Oh, so now because he thinks he's going to judge more shows. <laughs> no, I, I just, I couldn't handle the ones that I had and they were expensive boots and, I, and it concerned me, but the most uncomfortable things in the world. Do you know that Jesse Cherie Muller Clooney Rash Carava Bright has 15 pair of handmade boots? Well, she needs those that have her initials on them. That would be my mother. She could use those. Do you know the last time she wore them? Probably before I ever showed a steer in the show ring. Ryan, what, wh- how many pairs of shoes do you have? That doesn't matter. Do you know I'm how many curious. pair of Louis Vuitton she has? <laughs> We're talking <laughs> about you don't 15. Wear all, you don't wear all your shoes? Handmade. Dale, do you, have you ever had a pair of handmade boots? No, 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 no. I don't I think the you know what they ones. cost now. But they cost more back then. Here's here's the topic I need help with, and I and I, I discuss this with my youngest daughter a little bit oh, because I Lord. I wanted a true opinion on this, and this isn't necessarily in the livestock industry, just a oh, trend. Sweet Jesus. But I think it's carrying over into it, and I think you're going to take it down the Kardashian road. What's up with the big booty Judy preference in humans nowadays? That all comes from the Kardashians, like implants. Why would someone want a... So, I know you don't keep up on pop culture or no, anything else. No, I don't. Like that. That's fine. I know most people in this industry don't. I have never watched an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Honest to God. Never. But, all those girls have big, juicy asses. And that has been something because they were 15 years... Of a reality show, and I know they just got canceled or quit or finale or whatever, but yeah, that's why, and literally, that's what my term comes from, that this one's built like a Kardashian from behind. When you got a big-ass guilt, that's what I say. But So this this is truly popular within teenagers and beyond right If now. you could line up all the Kardashian girls from behind, they would be extra thick. Is all I'm going to say. Other than... But is it popular with most of the people? Most of the girls out there? I mean, ass implants are at an all-time high. And has it made it into the beauty pageant side? Oh, God, no. No. Can't do that. Well, how can there be such a separation on that? Because the beauty pageant deal has nothing to do with reality TV. I'm, I'm going to give you a whole perspective here. There was Miss America about 10 years ago. Tried to have a reality show about the girls that were running for Miss America before. Uh, No, nobody. I mean, they had it. None of those girls, because they all knew what it took to be Miss America and what they could say and could not say. It was a bomb. There's no way way you can make it entertaining. Right. Nobody's going to admit to having ass implants or cheek implants or whatever. I'm telling you, when I'm I'm traveling, I find them on the airplanes and the airports, and it just, it just, Kind of shocks me a little bit. Uh, I'm telling you, I know more people personally than I want to. And they're not livestock people, but people that I have to like deal with in my everyday life at home in Crockett. That, yeah, they have these (laughs) additions. 
that's and that's fine. I'm sure they like it. I I just I was unaware that it was. It works for them, is all I'm telling you. I, I knew it was happening. I understood the Kardashian take on it. I just didn't realize that there were so many. My youngest daughter's in eighth grade, and I don't think she knows of anything else, anything else but that. If that makes sense, bigger the better. Yep, pretty much. And that's fine. If that's, I'm just. It caught me off guard. Damn. What about the high waist jeans coming back? Oh, that's. Are they coming back? Again, why are we talking about this? That's a trend. So you're going to see it in the show ring. No, no. You bad, don't think? Bad. No, it's going to happen, I think. I, I'm not saying I, it's I tried good. to address the trend about the bell bottom jeans on girls, and literally the last four weeks, a girl has tripped over her bell bottom jeans in the ring under me, and I want to go. I talked about this, but I don't because I'm a nice person, so I don't. But yeah, unless you're 60 pounds and six foot two, high waist jeans do nothing for you. But do you do you not see more of them now? I have not lately, but I'm sure I will. Yeah, I think I, the the bell bottom or the flare legged jeans is the problem right now. And the other problem is the rolling up of the jeans. So they're not on the ground. So they don't walk on them? Yeah. And that's boys, too. Like, they cuff them. Like, they'll cuff them up. And I'm like, oh, dear God, help me, baby Jesus. <laughs> but, like, when I judge, oh. like, I, I mean, this boy will know I call him out, and that's okay, and he'll get over it. But anyway, so when I judge that show on the racetrack in Bakersfield, California, we got down to the top three pick showmen in senior showmanship, and they were all great. Literally, they were all great showmen. There was not one of those three that I would not say, hey, you know what? You drive my pig anywhere that I thought at a major show. But the one that's third wasn't quite as intense. The one that was second, I've seen him show a lot of judge team. He decided to show in a short sleeve shirt, had a beard and a goatee, and granted, He's close to 21 and aging out, and that's fine. But there was this other girl that was in a long sleeve shirt, all this other stuff, whatever. And so I I talked about the fact that when you show in showmanship, the only way you can learn is by looking at that person judging or going to them before. I've never had a beard. I've never had a goatee. I always judge in a long sleeve shirt. And so... That kid got beat, and he's a great showman. He still should have got beat regardless of any of that. But he could have helped himself by having a clean-shaven face and a long sleeve shirt. With with you as a personal preference. With me, and he's shown under me a million times. Yeah. Now, with somebody else, may not have made any, it may have been an advantage. Right, It wouldn't. but I'm talking about me. We're talking about trends. Yep. Things that happen. And what about a mullet coming in? You okay with that? You know what? I am not going to judge anybody by their personal style on their hair unless it distracts. If you keep flicking your mullet to me, it's a bad deal. <laughs> Got it. Do you remember, and maybe this isn't isn't fit the topic, but I think we can throw it in there. There was a time period, 10, 15, 20 years worth maybe, in collegiate livestock judging. What What were you only allowed to wear? A blue Navy blazer and a yellow tie and a white shirt. Was it still there when you went through four year? Uh, well, Doctor Skaggs really wanted me to wear that, but it just did not. I think happen. you're. I think you're right on that verge where it was just starting to break out. Is my guess. No, I think I was the one that changed it. Actually, yeah. So I, I don't. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't blue blazers, but there was a time for for those that don't realize. Ninety nine. I am pretty the- sure because of how much Doctor Skaggs and. Chris, then Chris Bowman, now Dr. Bowman, scrutinized my wardrobe. I'm pretty sure I might have been the person that might help change all this. I'm just saying. <laughs> so it was still evident when you were going through. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't remember. Navy, exact, blue, and yellow. I don't remember the exact years, but mm-hmm. um, what other, I, I've got one for you that I know you'll love because you've talked about this with me a little bit. What about the crazy big tail heads on cattle for a while? Oh. So Not the little cool we haven't even heads. got into this and see like there's so much to talk about and so little time. So here's the thing. I don't care if it's a goat, a sheep or a cow, because thank God. And again, you pig people love you. Y'all have not tried 
to put fake hair on a pig yet. Or I'm not saying it hasn't been tried. I bet it has. It may have been tried, but it's it's not not a trend. No, correct. Not a trend. Y'all have got some trends that I don't agree with, but fake hair on a pig is not a trend. You want to know why? Because they're constantly in motion. So fake hair tends to fall off. Even in the cattle ring on occasion. In the cattle, in the sheep, in the goat, whatever. But let me tell you what the problem is with fake hair. If you can't do it immaculately and make it look natural, then you look like a fool. There are more people that look like a fool than can do it correctly. You have no idea how many people I have paid that can do it and make it look natural and immaculate at jackpot shows across the country, especially in Texas, when I had a show team. Where it's allowed, obviously. Well, we've never done it when it wasn't allowed. Duh. No, yeah, but it does happen. No, I mean, there are rules against it, but that's only like, I don't know many jackpot shows that say you can't you have fake hair. But yeah, there are a few. But if you're going to do it, do it the right way. The people that want to put goat hair on a cattle flank, bad idea. Bad. Terrible idea. The people that want to use twine to build a tail head instead of horse hair, terrible idea. Terrible. But it happens. I, I am with you there, Ryan. I think if it's done, I think if they can do it so well that it looks borderline natural hair, great. I'm I'm all in. Even- I think if I am somebody that I love people that excel at a craft, there are people that can take a calf tail head that literally has about a half inch of hair, whether they build it with horse hair or glue or whatever, and make it look absolutely natural. If you can do that, do that. There are people that can take baling twine, cut up finely, or horse hair or a million other materials And build legs and put more on the front and more on the back to make that animal appear to have a more aggressive, intensive set of bone and foot. And it look natural even when they're walking and moving. And if you can do that, do that. There is no judge worth their salt that is going to see an animal that has been enhanced in that way. That it's natural, and you have to go, is that it? Is that what that is? Or did they whatever? That's going to discount you for that. So if you can do it well and do it amazing, get after it. If you can't, it's going to hurt If you, you. can't, I'm going to make fun of you on the mic. And I can tell you, I was at a show in Kansas one time, and... Both the Grand and Reserve Market Heifers were families that I have known for multiple years. And one had a Dorito chip terrible tail head. The other put goat hair in the flank of this market heifer. And I literally said on the mic, I said, I know both of these families well enough. I'm fixing to just literally annihilate them. And I called them out. And guess what? When they came back in the Grand Drive, They had it all fixed and correct and better, and they ended up being fourth and fifth overall. So it worked. I don't. I don't know if you've seen this, Ryan, but I've watched it in the goat arena, even at the national shows. We're not just. We're not even trying to make that goat hind leg look or the front legs. We're not putting it in there like you would on a calf. We're taking that hair. I assume most of the time clipped. No, you're just building it bigger. They're 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 molding it like clay. It's all flattened right. down. Yeah, that it, there's work. no there's no hair separate. It's, what it's part a mold. of natural did I not? But but you know what? I, I watch judges use them, and they that have no no concern whatsoever. And I I'm I'm baffled. I don't get it. I agree. The things that I want to say about this is that I think that I appreciate the goat people for trying to like fit those animals as well as they can and like going the extra mile. But again, I think we're at the start of it and they need to understand if it's going to look like Play-Doh, we don't need to do it. That would be it. It's crazy. When we judged a show in Ohio last summer after Rona, you had some out there 
that it looked like Play-Doh. True. And you discounted them for it. I think some of them might have bought goats from you at one time. Maybe not that goat, but like. Well, I think because a lot of judges just go with it. They don't, they, they, they're okay with it. So I think that's, that's the reason that they're, they continue to do it. I, I don't know. I'm confused. I, it doesn't, if it doesn't look done very well or natural, just like you stated, in my mind, I'm going to discount them for it, period. It just is what it is. I'm not saying you're going to go last in class or anything, but if the decision's close, you've got a terrible twine job. Here's another calf that's pretty good, looks natural. Guess what? It's probably going to go that direction. So we've talked about the worst trends in like physicality of animals. We're talking about fitting of animals. I think we've talked about a little bit about, you know, the clipping and stuff like that. That, like, I, I, I want to bring up some things in the worst trends that need to be talked about in other areas of the livestock show industry that Dale's not going to be comfortable with, and that's okay. I had a, I had a couple more little minor things to talk well, about. Well, then you finish, and then I'll start. I, I and, and I'm not trying to be negative. It's more maybe just to... To find out, I understand that I, I believe in the dairy goat world. They've always shown with the neck chain, to my knowledge. I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. So it was only natural when they brought the boar goats over. That's how they show them. And I think the full-blood goats are a little calmer in terms of their demeanor and, and adapt to it. And, heck, you can show them until they're four or five. I, you can show them forever. And they get very broke and used to that chain. And it works fine. They can make them look great. There's people in the weather arena, especially some of the senior showmen that have a well-broke goat that can make them look better on a chain, I think, than even a halter at times. However, those goats that aren't broke well to that chain or a younger person showing that's maybe not not as experienced yet, when we're pulling on that chain hard enough that we're choking them out and, and they're wanting to, to drop down and cough out, those things we, we have to avoid. And it's real simple. We just just put a halter on them. And uh, we're probably going to have a better experience. So I don't know if that's necessarily a trend, Ryan, but somewhere in this whole mix of things, there was a time, and, and I fought Denver with this for years. I'm the one that brought this up multiple times before. Yes, that they wouldn't, they wouldn't even allow a halter. I don't understand that. I think anything that we can do to that animal, and it may not be, maybe it wasn't how tradition had it 20 years ago. I don't care if, if it's tradition or not, but make it better. Period. For the kid and for the animal. If it makes it easier for that kid to show that animal or that animal to be shown, you do that. I think that that is most of my trends that I have. What do you have left? I do have one more. Uh huh. I heard there was a trend to use Berkshire barrows as grand barrows overall. Don't be a jerk. Use the bird. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. That was funny. Moving on. Okay, well, I think we're done with that unless you have more of the main topics. I don't I'm I'm pretty well out and I guess we could go to question and answer. Oh, so cause you're done. I'm asking you, do you have anything? I've asked you twice. So I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I think there is something and there are trends that probably don't need to happen. And like I'm just gonna give a couple. I love judging hogs, I love hog kids, I love hog shows. I think the two whip thing is probably something that we need to shy away from, especially in showmanship. And and I, I apologize, Ryan. I haven't. I, I've only seen it a little bit in the hog ring, but they're coming into the ring with two whips. Yeah, because I know obviously they're breaking hogs with it to try to keep their head up for various reasons. I, I haven't noticed a lot of it in the ring, but I'm not out there sorting many hog shows. Oh no, it's it's every show. And so again, I, I don't care if you do it. In the actual show, and like everybody knows that no, I'll be like, oh, now you came in here with two whips. You're serious. And like, I'll play with you and make fun of you and whatever. And it's not going to affect how your hog does. But thinking showmanship, that's probably something we should not gravitate to. I also think that one of the worst trends ever, does not matter what species it is, who's doing it. And y'all know that I am out there as much as anybody. I wear more bling than anybody. Put in bling on show halters, show sticks, whips, chains, whatever. In the show arena, I think we should 
stray away from that. And if you want to bling yourself out as an individual, whether it's your belt, your shirt, you know, your bow, whatever, let's keep the bling off the show equipment that we use to show these animals. I think that's a big trend that I think is bad. And this is not like bashing on the people that create, you know, show harnesses and belt clips and whatever that have bling on it. I just don't think it's a good idea. You can buy a show stick in every color known to man right now. I think you'd be better served with a black silver. Is it, it's the reason of personal preference? Or you think it takes attention away from the animal? What, what's your Again, your... it's attention away from the animal. This That's is like the bobbing up and down and reasons. I have no problem if a kid wants to celebrate their personal style on them in any way. Obviously, I'm the most outlandish judge there is. I celebrate my personal style every day. On that animal, let's leave it to that animal to show that. Fair enough. I agree with it. I, I haven't, I mean, I haven't encountered that. I see How all have the, you not encountered it? You've been to every major show in the world. I, I watch, I see it at the, the supply stands and things like that occasionally. Then in the you ring. see it in the ring too, sir, but you're just in your bubble and don't believe it. No, it doesn't. It, it, I, I would, I would like to do, I mean, there's lots of things. When, when I see a sheep showman that gets down so low and I understand they're, they're getting down low to get pressure down lower and, and keep everything right. But Anything that's done that draws away from that draws attention to the person more so or the equipment that's distracting is to me in I guess it takes away from the animal a little bit. I would prefer to to have the focus on the animal. And I think that's that's kind of what you're saying when you talk about the bling on the equipment and so forth. No, that's what I'm um, saying. I don't care. It if, doesn't it doesn't if that doesn't. individual child wants to express their style any way they want to, whether it's a mullet or their clothing or whatever, all that stuff. If we're talking about something that's going to be on that animal, whether it's a halter, a chain, whatever, let's try to make that blend into that animal as much as possible. Fair enough. I don't see how that's a hard concept to address. Well, I think I think some of them are wanting to show their individual style, just like they would with their clothing. They can do that with their clothing. I I agree. I'm probably, I'm probably, yeah, maybe my. Y'all talking my, about to the most blingy bitch that's ever stepped foot in a ring. And when I'm saying do it individually, not on your animal, you might need to listen. I'm I'm good there. I'm I'm a little. I, I that that surprises me a little bit. That it, I'm not saying it, it affects your how you're in a place or anything. Why I've said this multiple podcasts. You said about let's not take attention away from the animal, but if you're all blinged out as a person, to me that's 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 taking some attention from the animal as well. No, I think that's putting attention on you as an individual and making you stand out. I think when you've got a zebra show stick and some rhinestone pink harness and halter, then that that's different. When you, you almost put, you just call it even tag. When you put that on when you put that onto the animal or in it or utensil that you're using to exhibit that animal, I think it's different. Got it. Fair enough. Next. Do you have any any more main topics? Um, well, I think I could go on. I mean I'm I'm open. I've I've got through most of most of mine. And I and I and again, people we're not these these are just things that we came. I'm sure there's hundreds more, and there's things we missed and so forth, and and not trying to offend anybody. Whether you have oh yes, I did. Thank like God that. you gave me a second. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, and then I'll shut up after this, and y'all can all then we'll go on. right into question and answer. Right, all on about your merry way. The worst, one of the worst trends ever, is bad behavior at the backdrop. I think bad behavior anywhere, but it is awkward, even more awkward at the back. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. A bad behavior No, I think bad behavior. Good. But anyway, we've talked about that. The, I want to specifically focus on the backdrop. I have talked about several times during this podcast that backdrop pictures are awkward. Whether you win, you lose, whatever, it's awkward because not everybody's happy. Everybody's tense. There's 25 people trying to get one animal to make the perfect picture and whatever. So I just want to like give you a couple of hints. Backdrop pictures are awkward. Behavior at the backdrop has gotten 
to an all new low. And so again, not everybody's going to be happy because I am telling you, I am the judge that judges more shows than anybody else in the nation. And I will tell you that I tell people all the time, I used to think you could make one person happy. Now I'm not sure about that. I don't know if you make anybody happy because I have been to multiple shows where the person that won was unhappy because they thought their other animal should have won. So making that one person happy, not so sure about. But when you're at a backdrop picture and you're lucky enough to be in a backdrop picture with that judge, whoever it is, whether it's the gay, Del Hummel, or anyone, let's have a little decorum. Let's have a little bit of common sense. Because we know as a judge, as an exhibitor, as a spectator, that there are going to be some people that overindulge in the alcoholism of it all at a show. If they're going to be in your backdrop photo, put those people at the end. Do not put them right beside, for instance, the gay judge. That's a woman who's drunk off her ass and decides that what she needs to do the whole time while we're trying to set up the animal 25 times to get the right picture is squeeze your ass. Not cool. But can I insert here just a little bit? Go right ahead. I, I would I'm have enjoyed. Done. I'm not I would have done. Been, I would have found entertainment value if I would have been there to watch that. Just, just for and the that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm glad you would have found it entertaining. Maybe <laughs> tomorrow ahead. at the Go county ahead. fair you'll find now, it if entertaining. This, if this would have been an attractive male, would you have been okay with it? No. I okay. still just don't checking, think it's okay. Just checking. Just checking. If someone is inebriated. Put them at the end so the judge is not by them. Put the soberest person by them. Thank you. We appreciate it. Put the drunkard at the end. I have done this multiple times at a backdrop. Okay, you drunk. You stay at the end. Hold the banner. All right? Like, this is Got something it. that should happen. If you're unhappy that you got to the top five, but not with your placing, let me tell you something. Whether you're the kid or you're the fitter, or you're the parent. You may be unhappy. You may not like it. That's all fine. If that judge looks at you and says, after he or she has stood there for 15 minutes, taking a backdrop picture with your family, your animal, your group, and extends their hand and says, congratulations, good job, you need to be that person that says, Thank you. We appreciate it. Whether you're pissed off you got beat by a mini Hereford or not. If you can't do that and be at least civil to that judge, don't go up and take a backdrop picture with that person. Seems fair enough. So the shit talking and the shitty behavior and the drunk behavior at backdrops. And when I'm talking shit talking, I've addressed this on Snap a lot. The people that want to talk shit. Yeah, I just read them and call them out. I'm talking about other things, because if you're going to talk shit to me at a backdrop, I'm literally going to annihilate you. And those of you that know have been there, I've done that to you. So I'm not talking about you right now. I'm talking about the fact that we just need to have a little bit of common sense when you're taking a backdrop photo with the judge, whether it's at the jackpot show, the county fair, or the junior national or the major show. Let's have a little bit of common sense, people. It will go a long ways for all of you. I bet those those people waiting for the backdrop pictures tomorrow, they are in line and ready. Nah, this won't get released until tomorrow night. Okay. Well, anyway. So there you go, Dale. I'm done. <laughs> but I'm the done Friday, now. the Friday ones will be ready. Okay. Thank you very much. I agree completely on the on the it doesn't matter. And to me, it doesn't matter in the backdrop. But that is when you you have a chance to be you're gonna be in range you will of find out more of kids true yes. colors at a backdrop yes. than you ever will in exactly. arena sometimes totally different than and what you saw that in the is ring. not a good thing children and you will remember children them. that listen children that listen dale has all these people that say children listen i'm telling you children right now i learn more about a kid's true colors at a backdrop than i ever do in an arena so pay attention right now and <laughs> be smart about it amen Question and answer. This one comes from Curtis. Mm. 
Hmm? First off, love your podcast. Keep it up. I do have a couple questions about today's, uh, about an episode. It would have been last week, I believe. If the reason for more than one judge is because of political issues or politic, the potential of politics, wouldn't asking a judge for recommendations for an associate be a conflict if the reason was for such? In other words, he's saying if, if that show hires a judge and we want a two-judge system, why let them pick their buddy that's going to go along with them? That's why we said we give them a list and let yes, and, let the show pick. And I and I'm I I guess I would prefer that the 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 person asked to judge a show would would throw two, three, four, five names. No, that's back what to that, we that literally show. said. Yeah, if you now, decide on this person to judge the show, the show management should say, "Could you give us a list of people?" Yep, whatever. But again, I'm not against show management deciding on a person and then giving them. The show judge, a list of five or ten. And yeah, say, it could it could, pick it could go either direction. We yeah. just want to avoid two judges that may be at opposite ends of the spectrum on, on the type. Having somebody that picks a yes man, a yes woman. But here's the whole problem with this. And like, I'm not dissing this person's question, but if that show picks that person, they're going to find a way. They pick that individual, they're going to find a way to get that yes man, yes person, regardless of what the system is. So they have to do better, and I think I think a legitimate Dale question. Dale didn't like that. Dale didn't like that. Well, I don't again I don't, too much honesty. I, I don't know what more you can you can do other than allow a list to be given either direction. No, but I'm just saying seems seems logical. If they pick the wrong person, the initial person to judge the show, they're gonna find a way to find the person that needs to be the yes person. That's what I'm saying. Got it. I assumed you're referring to the second person pick being picked. You're no, referring to I'm the just initial saying judge pick. Got it. That's what I'm understand. Yeah. So Curtis, not I, I, maybe you took it wrong, or maybe we didn't clarify uh, no, well I enough. Clarified. But I, I think I think when we give a list back that has multiple people on it, and could you have multiple yes men? Maybe uh, I guess. I but think let, it's let's really hard in this industry to find multiple yeah it, yes bitches. That would be on a list for a major show that a major show would say, yes, you gave us this list. This is a qualified, capable person. But then again, then today, I find out I'm wrong. Next. Okay. Here's, and this, this one addresses kind of the same issue a little bit. The, the second question and answer. In just about every episode, with exception of a few, politics gets brought up. My question is, what do the both of you think is driving force behind politics in the show ring today? Is the judge trying to help a breeder out for next year, a kid's animal that maybe was posted more on social media, or maybe were college roommates? Thoughts? D. All of the above. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think there's ever just. I mean, there's not yeah, just one there, reason. There. Yeah. There. I. I want to state this because I've been pretty blunt, and I don't care. Because, again, I don't think I'm going to get to judge any of these shows that matter because they're scared to hire me. But you're asking what the driving force behind politics is. It's never one thing. It's a multitude of things. And so I think first and foremost, for those of you listening that don't think people make money in this industry, you're wrong. And so the overwhelming driving force is always gonna be money because the more times you sell one broker one get one to the backdrop that you're standing in the picture with that gets its picture taken at a major show or an important show a regional show a state fair regardless who is judging that's gonna be money into your pocket in some way somehow there are other reasons where as i have said and i will say again especially in the breeding cattle industry in this country. The majority of the breeds hire breeders. This breeder judges this show. He knows the next breeder is judging the next show. So that guy gets a little edge and then this lady gets an edge. It's just a revolving door is I scratch your back, you scratch mine. I don't think there's anything monetarily there, but in the end, Yeah, monetarily, it's good for everybody because I win, you win, we all win, and that makes us all 
sell our animals for more money. There is a very small percentage of this where people flat get paid to use an animal. And people don't want to talk about that, but it happens. And and I, I know I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I, I can't think of Oh, it happens. I can't think of I, I don't know personally of a, a case that I can just say this this high. I don't have personal knowledge of and, and I'm not and again I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I, I think it's okay. very minimal. And I don't have I said personal very knowledge small of percentage of those times happening. Well, I mean less than one percent, but it happens. Okay, I think the big picture that Ryan talked about when one breeder scratch in the back, and I think you can say in the cattle or the sheep or the pigs and in the breeding cattle thing, it it just it just is it is what it is, and there's nobody in that situation. I don't think one breeder's paying the other breeder, but ultimately, if they're doing better in the shows, as Ryan stated, it's gonna gonna probably help sell cattle or sell pigs or sell whatever. So there, there's the, going back to the, the the actual the the initial question. I mean, it could be for who knows what reason. Maybe it was a college roommate. Maybe it was this or that. So there's there's multiple reasons for doing uh, for politics coming into play, and and it's not just in an obviously livestock show, and it's in every aspect of of human life. And it's something that sometimes Ryan and I point out here on the show, and we we only talk about it being in the livestock show ring because that's what we're more familiar with. It's everywhere. It's something that we need to do our best to try to get a control on. Because if if we we continue to talk about this being the best youth activity in in the, on the planet, then we need to we need to make sure it is that and and do the best that we can. And it's never going to be perfect. Never. But we can always try to do better. We can always strive, and we can always continue to do better. And that's what we need to do. Absolutely, Ryan. I am going to be getting on a plane in a matter of hours to get Imagine to Vegas. Imagine that to come in a see matter me. of an hours to to go out in the middle of the desert I for know. a county fair, just to see the gay and and I make know. sure that your your oh. grand spree speech has a little bit of politics in it in terms of government and Biden. I, I want to hear I want to hear Biden, Mister Ray, Ray Spate, come out. You're so demanding, Dale. I don't, I don't, I'm assuming middle of the desert, north of Las Vegas, probably conservative. You'll be okay. I have no It'll idea. Be I fine. don't care. Cause y'all know I don't give it. I mean, literally, I literally don't care. But okay. I think that's, is. that's a wrap. This has been, I know you guys on the other no, end don't no, realize. No, no, but, no, but there is a wrap. Oh, sorry. You're sorry. missing. Oh, dear God. See, this is why I, the gay is here. Question next and answer. Week, and then we're done. Next week. Question answers over. Okay. Next week, people. I want to remind y'all that is the one year anniversary of the Beyond the Ring. Oh, got it. Good job. I did miss that, I believe. Yes, and you and I did t- you and I talked about that. So we, we don't even one need a main topic. Year anniversary of all this nonsense that we call the Beyond the Ring podcast. We are going to I don't even know what we're gonna do yet, but it's gonna be <laughs> fabulous. It may be it may be in all current events. You just never know. No, we're gonna. I'm gonna bring up the good, the bad, and the ugly of the past year because there has been good, there has been bad, and there has been ugly. Y'all know this bitch speaks the truth. But next week, I want to say thank y'all to everybody that's been with us from the beginning. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you, even though you send me hate mail. Thank you for listening for the past year because next week is our one year anniversary. So we will celebrate that next week. From Dale, from the gay. Y'all come back now, you hear? Be safe. Fever Las Vegas.